Welcome back, friends. You are watching Tactical Enlightenment, featuring our 300 series. All of these episodes that feature our small but powerful force of war veterans face off against foes in a wide variety of scenarios and in ever-increasingly more difficult situations. Howdy friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. I felt like every single episode I was giving the intro the same way, so we're, ch we're changing it up a little bit today. Southern style, howdy. Uh, so we're continuing with our 300 challenge here. This is my elite army. Uh, that's a side branch from the main campaign. You can see we have elite troops. We'll do some upgrades here. Uh, but the core of it, of course, is the the elite family members and high-level companions that I've created along uh, this very long campaign that I've been playing. So we're going to raid this village. These insolent villagers decided to attack us, so we'll just auto-resolve this. Uh, we lost a few troops, but the whole purpose of this raid, of course, is to pick a fight. In this series, we are wandering around Calradia with our group of 300. That's uh, a little bit less because of injuries, but 300 badasses. Uh, and trying to wreck shop anything that that comes in our path uh, of course I'm not attacking forces of six seven hundred this is more like it fifteen hundred uh, and I'm looking for parts of the map that are sort of interesting I actually chased down a smaller army uh, just before this battle and we took a, a castle here to cause some problems because I want a map with some elevation for a battle here uh, so I'm gonna recruit for some prisoners here just so that we have 300 troops now, these are not exactly elite units that I'm rec recruiting here, but there, at least we have our 300 uh, Spartans, right, Leonidas. Uh, and uh, into battle we go here. This Southern Empire force is a large. So that's in high level noble. This is going to be over 2,000 enemies. This will be perfect. We'll stall here for a little bit of daylight. Uh, we, we always want to have a, a good amount of daylight for these videos so that the, the viewer can see what's going on. And uh, in we go here. We'll, we'll set, of course, player damage at normal. The difficulty is basically on the highest you can set it at. Uh, and in we go with our, our 300 troops. Right, so this is the battlefield I, I was hoping for. It's a quirky battlefield. There's a huge open area in the middle, but the edges of it, all the way wrapped around these edges here, are really high plateaus and steep hills. Well, our army has about 130, maybe 120 archers, including 90 Batanium Fiend champs. Uh, I guess you could say they're the other core of this of this main army group we have here. I've got to put some of these captains in groups here. Uh, as I do this, I can just explain the sixth. Uh, my sixth division is skirmishers. All of those guys have shields, nasty javelin skills. The seventh is horse archers. Uh, and the 8th, that's my elite 8th Corps. Those are the most badass troops in my game. Uh, a lot of them have like 300 uh, riding skill and 300 pull arm. They're basically all elite knights. Um, and there might be some, some other other units in there, yeah. other, other family members of, of strength. Uh, so the 6th and 8th are, you'll hear me mention them a lot in our battles. Those are paramount to us winning. And of course, a whole bunch of Britannian Fiend champs. Anytime you're fighting a huge army like we are, uh, we're going to have uh, all the different elements of game of the game that we can to help us try to win uh, this battle, including this huge elevation here. So Soldiers, move forward! Footmen, four troops, forward! So we're going to spread out our archers way up on top of this hill here. Archers shoot further and for more damage downhill. It's physics, right? The arrows going downhill slow down uh, slower than arrows being shot uphill. And, of course, your visibility shooting down is, is increased, right? You can see troops further away. You can kind of look down on the battlefield and pick your targets. Uh, the fourth, I'll mention the fourth. It's another specialized unit. You can see it's a mix of infantry and ostensibly archers. What it is is it's crossbow, and I will use my fourth division 
Uh, early on, of course, they'll be firing bolts. I'll have them spread. But later in the battle, we'll be using them to charge offensively as a shield wall. Is this... This is horse archers. For some reason, the Southern Empire has a huge amount of horse archers here. Uh, and they're leading the way here. 300 fucking horse archers. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a challenge. We're going to fly in from the side here with the 7th. And I think I'll, I'll drag one of the, the cav divisions. But we're going to wait till they get a little closer. I see heavy cav in there too. And now we're open fire and we're going to charge in on the flank here and try to destroy as many of these insolent fucks. I'm also going to charge with the 8th Corps. Remember I said those guys are high level knights. A lot of those guys will be able to attack uh, these horse archers with, with nasty fucking weapon skill. And in we go here. These are high level horse archers too. These are... Uh, I, I don't know... In my campaign, the Southern Empire here must have Kazate, Kazate cities because they have like all the way up to Khans guards in here, and they they have heavy cavalry mixed in as well. Interesting. Yeah, fuck Khans guards. These archers up here at this stage, right? They're basically firing unimpeded. We have this beautiful hill to our left, preventing these horse archers from being able to circle us. Uh, and of course we're towards the back of the map, so they, they can't really get behind us. Uh, so advantage us. I could just lob some javelins into their midst. There's so fucking many of them, you almost can't miss. Let's see what the fucking rest of the enemy's doing here. Fuck you down here, heavy cav. Have a javelin. Right in his head. Okay, so their main, main force is sitting back shooting. But they're shooting uphill, right? So they're not going to be able to do a lot of damage. You see all the horse archers there. 160 fucking horse archers still. It's a beautiful sunrise to kill some fucking insolent enemy fucks. Throw some javelins right in their face here as we circle around. Sort of intimidate their force. Oh, I see you coming, motherfucker. That guy was trying to spear me. Just a quick replay of that because that spear would have done major damage. In time, you too will learn to slightly veer against incoming horsemen and wipe them out with your polearm. Of course, paramount that, that I don't lose a lot of health in a long battle like this as well. Uh, for those wondering, I, I'm doing these... Uh, they're all basically one take. Uh, now, I have had an episode already where it took more than one take. But you, the viewer, I will try to tell if it takes takes me more than one attempt to complete these uh, these very difficult battles. Of course, uh, the, the idea of these is to sort of simulate the very high difficulty that the Spartans faced against the, the 200,000 Persians. Uh, of course, it's it's difficult to make an exact analog in Bannerlord, uh, but that's kind of what we're doing here. It was recommended by some viewers that I, I do some some fighting with smaller armies than I normally have, and they were curious, you know, what the what was the largest size force I could take on with our 300 elite units, uh, and hopefully this series is kind of an answer to that already. I'm going to join our infantry here. Their main infantry vanguard is now marching uphill, 100, 140 guys. So we're going to spread spread out the fourth division. That's our crossbow. The sixth, that's our javelins on our side. I'm dragging the 8th Corps, and the 1st Division is also heavy infantry. That's on the other side of that. And we're basically going to try to pincher this enemy. As they come in, we'll attack at different angles. It's a, a slight variation of Hannibal's tactics, the pincher tactics at Kenai. Well, we like it when they retreat, especially when we're pounding them with javelins. In they come. Here's my 6th with me. My 8th is behind me. And I just told everybody to attack. In we go. These are high-level troops. They got legionnaires. They want their arms cut off too, so we'll, we'll be glad to provide their wish. I see nobles around me. Kill these fucking nobles. We're steamrolling downhill too. Get this battle on here in a moment, and I'll explain what's happening, why we're just mangling this force. They got Batanium Fiend champs of their own. This is not like it's a weak fucking force. In fact, those guys are kicking my ass. With my athletics, if I start getting my ass kicked, I run, right? Your discretion is the better part of valor, right? In this case, you know, if I've got two, three legionnaires and a Batanium Fiend champ on me, you'll see me hightail it out of there. All right, the enemy's trying to flee here. 
We're gonna cause as much damage as we can. They're not fleeing, they're just reforming. Have a kick in the back, motherfucker. We're gonna basically try to ride down as many of their forces as we can before they reform. They got a lot of horse archers still. Fuck you, fucking Consguard slamming me in the head. Man, I've taken a beating already. For people who wonder even how long I survive battles like this, of course, my character is level 52, I think, 52. He's got tons of hit points, he's got 330 athletics, he's got elite armor. Uh, there's a couple episodes, I can't remember which episode, but one of these 300 series I detail both his character spec, uh, his equipment, and then a lot of the other units within our, our 8th force. Um, of course our channel I detail uh, character spec, uh, weapon loadout, companion loadout, the kind of the way I've formed my, my 8th core a little bit more in detail. But people watching wondering how I'm still on my legs after that beating. My guy's got over 200 hit points. He's got elite armor. Um, so he takes a lot less damage than you might take from, you know, a glaive pounded on your head. Uh, you know, it's, it's so yeah, you'll get to that stage if you play a, a campaign into the late stages like I have as well. Maybe not quite as late as I have. This is kind of nice. They're just kind of sauntering away here, a slow gallop. You motherfucking cons guards. Uh, they're just slowly galloping away here, letting us pick them off before they get to their main force. Little Sunday stroll while they get beheaded here. All right, now we'll peel back. Definitely going to be playing defensive in this battle until the, the time is right. No, I don't need to check my mail. Thanks. That was a, a finger fumble. You motherfuckers trying to shoot at us. Have a fucking spear in the face. The swearing is a vestige of a, a military career and 30 years in the fire service as a firefighter. Uh, I'll try to keep it clean. Goddamn email fucking popping up. I apologize, folks. I'm hardly a professional YouTuber. I just started this channel a few months ago. Uh, I had a couple friends at work saying, damn, dude, you're fucking kicking ass. Dude, you ought to make a channel and share that with people. Uh, so here I am. The enemy horse archers are pouring in again, but these are mid-tier horse archers. These guys we should be able to butcher. They still have some higher level guys in here. I'm going to try to cut down their elite forces. Um, and we're just going to continue to skirmish with them. I'm trying to hold ammunition, withhold ammunition here. Uh, now heavy cav is coming in. Got to handle these guys before they cut down some of our archers. But they're sort of attacking one unit at a time. It's it's very suboptimal strategy, and it gives us a pretty good chance to win this battle. You should always, in your own game of Bannerlord, you should always be attacking with multiple units at once. You saw earlier when their infantry division came in, we attacked them with five fucking different divisions, right? We're attacking them with archers, we're attacking them with cavalry, we're attacking them with our elite units. And then, of course, we attacked them with both infantry units, skirmishers. Here, they're just letting their horse archers get shot off their mounts, while the rest of them just sit back like fucking terrified pussies. I mean, maybe there's an element of fear, uh, but I suppose most of this is just bad AI design. These fucking cons guards, man. I want that guy's head. See you in hell! Down you go. Uh, so I haven't forget, I wanted to mention it. Part of the reason we steamrolled their elite vanguard is that we're uphill. If you don't know the game, God, I'm getting shot to fucking pieces. I'm gonna have to, I may not even survive this this round. This may be the first take. <laughs> Sometimes I'm gonna, it'll take more than once to attempt these, uh, to succeed in these rather. So I'm just spreading out my units a little closer. They're kind of way out in the valley. I have now have my crossbow and a shield in a shield wall. That's because they're out of bolts. So these guys effectively become weak infantry. That said, they dealt a lot of damage with their crossbows, and a shield wall is highly valuable for a tactical battle like this. All right, so the enemy's just down there in the valley, hiding out like pussies. They've got some weak horse archers here. We're just going to try to soften them up here before we we enter the next phase of battle. So when we charge downhill, attacking their vanguard, the game has a physics engine and it emphasizes movement and speed. If you're standing still and you swing your weapon, it does way less damage than if you're moving, especially moving forward and swinging your weapon. Of course, if you're on a horse and swing your weapon, you do gigantic damage, right? That's how you can get, uh, you know, a spear, you can get couch lanced for 800 damage and you just, your character's obliterated. It's pretty realistic. If you're on a horse going 40 miles an hour and you hit a guy with a spear, 
he's not going to survive. I mean, unless he's wearing like incredible armor, he's going to be obliterated just by the inertia of the hit. So this is nice. More uh, divided attacks. The enemy is sending their infantry up with their archers back like 100 units. So we're going to charge this. I turned everybody to, to hold fire and we're going to come in and just butcher these guys. The enemy's definitely given us uh, a chance to win this battle here. 300 on, what was it, 2100, 2200? Off your horse. So, anytime you can gain elevation on the enemy, take it. Because your units are running downhill, that means they're doing more damage. They're also moving faster going downhill. The other enemy forces are, are coming uphill. That means they're doing less damage to you. So you have an enormous tactical advantage. Uh, both in real life and in Bannerlord, fighting from an uphill position. They got more horse archers coming in. We'll put some shields up here and do a little bit more skirmishing. Got these horse archers coming in. Each time they get close, I'm sending in my cav unit and my eighth core. Right? These elite, these elite cav units can come in, not as effectively as me maybe, but they can come in here and really butcher these guys. Push them back to their enemy lines. And then reset, right? I'll, I'll bring all my guys and, and put them back into safety again. They got so many fucking horse archers though. I must have killed 50 myself. This guy trying to line up shots on me. Fuck you. Of course, horse archers are absolutely destroyed by a strong glaive. I've got 330 polearm skill and a very fast, you can tell how fast my polearm is. It's not very long. Some people prefer a longer polearm. Uh, but I've asked my wife, she prefers, prefers a more medium sized polearm with the higher rate of speed. You know what I mean? All right, so we're moving, uh, we're moving our shield wall around here. Basically, these, these crossbowmen now become a defensive force for us, right? Don't forget the utility of all your different units. A lot of people just charge with their cavalry. Cavalry have so many different uses in Bannerlord. Uh, and, you know, I, I can't explain it all here, but in plenty of the episodes on this channel, I detail uh, many different uses uh, for, for your cavalry. In fact, the episode I think that probably best highlights it is a slow-mo variation. If you want to search for it by number, I think it's the... Uh, it's titled Expert Number 4. Uh, and for anybody wondering, you know, what the fuck Expert Number 4 means, it's basically a playlist I made of the, the hardest battles I've fought, usually outnumbered 2, sometimes even 3 to 1, uh, where we faced an extremely difficult challenge and overcame it with a high level of tactics, high level coordinated tactics. Uh, obviously, I don't recommend you try to emulate it unless you're a very uh, experienced player. There are players out there that are as experienced as me, as me uh, even more experienced uh, that maybe don't even benefit from my channel uh, but a lot of the intermediate players people just picking up the game uh, well pick, people picking up just picking up the game go see that strat guy uh, it's like strat gaming guides or something like that he, he's an incredibly detailed uh, detail oriented youtuber and he covers everything from like every single formation you should use for all the units to um, of course, how he commands his army, different tactics he uses, and then just tons of details about everything from uh, character spec to uh, to the perks. Uh, the guy, he just lives and breathes Bannerlord. Uh, you know, I've got a full-time job. I can't I can't keep up with with somebody like that. Nevertheless, what I'm hoping to bring to the community here is entertaining battles, right? I think I think a lot of people are entertained by these huge battles. Uh, and then, of course, we're trying to tactically do things that are very advanced as well. I'm hoping, especially the intermediate level player, somebody who's had the game for a couple, three, five months and wants to get better at field command, um, can really benefit from our channel. So as usual, I'm talking you to death and not explaining. Uh, I, sh I, remember, I, I try to remember that I should be explaining what my mind is going through right here. What we're doing is we're encircling this, this huge mass of enemies here and we're going to attack it now with combined forces. 
I have my infantry divisions and the crossbow division moving up. I have my archers attacking. They're actually in charge. So they're kind of slowly moving up and shooting at the same time. And then I have the 8th Corps pouring in behind them because we're attacking this, this great fishball here of enemies from all sides. Now I join the fray. I'm trying to be a little bit more careful because of my health. But I think we can make this enemy try to reform at a minimum and maybe even rout. Enemies hate being surrounded. So now I'm dragging the 5th and 8th Corps behind me. I'm actually going to drag these guys. Here come reinforcements. I'm going to actually put these units between the reinforcements and this enemy. Because like a fucking gate guard, you know, we are the gatekeepers here. None of you fucks make it out without paying the toll. To hell with you! Okay, I've gotten a bit out in front of my troops here, but now we're going to flank. I'm going to send the 5th and 8th Corps off to this right flank here, and these rest of these infantry units in the face of the enemy here, because we're going to try to maintain momentum here. We're not stopping this assault. I see members of the 6th Corps right in front of me here. Even though we're facing a huge force here, we're going to barrel in here. No guts, no glory. Fuck them. Why the fuck are my 5th Corps taking forever to get up here? I'm going to cut your guys' rations if you don't get up here already. Your Jarl is getting killed. Oh, I'm going to weave right through this. Anytime the enemy leaves me an opening like this where their archers are vulnerable, you're going to see me go kamikaze through here. I may get dropped, but these kind of destructive attacks, I can just lay waste to enemy archers. The 5th Corps has arrived. These are uh, my Batanian Fiend Champs. They're out of ammunition, but now they become pretty good shock troops. Fuck you. Have a shield. Now, we're going to keep this momentum up. We're getting shot. We're taking losses, but the enemy's really taking a beating. Yeah, no mercy. We're just going to continue a, just a juggernaut attack here. Another thing people are curious about is my weapon loadout. Uh, again, I do cover that in a couple episodes. If you're wondering why I'm swinging such a fast axe, first, it's a custom axe. This was made by my grandfather, who was the smith in this campaign. Uh, but the other thing is, it's an unusual axe. It's very short. Uh, just like my polearm, I like a fast weapon. And in this case, in melee, I like as fast a weapon as possible, as long as it has decent reach. Right? Again, ask your girlfriend, ask your wife, it's not the it's not the size of your pole arm. It's how you use it, right? It's how effective it is. If you can use it, you know, with a nice rate of speed, an exceptional rate of speed, then the length doesn't have to be superior. We got a beautiful sunset here again. I'm positioning these troops. I can't actually see their reinforcements. They might have routed, but we're gonna route these fucking guys. Oh, they see they're turning to fight. I dropped my shield too early too. So a very fast, short axe. The benefit is enormous, though. I can swing never-endingly at the enemy, and unless they're an extremely fast weapon themselves, none of these guys can counter my axe. And, of course, situations like this where they're running, you could kill 8, 10, 12 guys in a blink. Look at how slow these fucks are. I forgot I set those guys in a line. Get up here. I'm going to finish this force off. A lot of their forces must have routed because they had a lot of troops left. And I lost them in the mist here, and I guess they just fucking flat out routed. That'll happen when you get encircled and destroyed. Stay close. So another successful endeavor here for our 300, our 8th Corps, our elite units from this campaign. Uh, 
Hopefully folks are enjoying this series. It's actually been a lot of fun to fight. It's a nice break from the campaign. Also because I'm save scumming or, or whatever it's called, where you reload games. I, I, didn't know, I didn't even know what that term was until a few months ago. Uh, because I'm doing that for this, there's like no pressure. If I lose a battle, I'm probably going to fight it again. Not, I'm not going to fight the same battle ten times to try to win. Um, I, I won't spoil it too much, but we had a, a battle earlier where we had to fight three times to win. Uh, but there was a very, we'll call it extenuating circumstances why we lost. Uh, you'll have to check out the episode. It's, it's episode nine in this series. Uh, anyways, I hope you're enjoying this series. Uh, we will lose some of these, so there's a little bit of suspense for the viewer. I hope it's been enjoyable. I certainly like killing people on a beautiful sunrise. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested. Thanks for watching, fellas, and I'll see you guys next time.